Hello everyone, I am Siddhartha. Currently we are in the 8th module of our hands on machine learning course and in this 8th module we are discussing about the topics such as cross validation, hyperparameter tuning, model selection and model evaluation and in today's video we will be discussing about one of the important concepts in machine learning which is hyperparameter tuning. In hyperparameter tuning we have two types which are grid search CV and randomized search CV. So in this video first of all let's try to understand what are all the different types of parameters that we have in machine learning and what is meant by this hyperparameter tuning. Finally we will discuss what is meant by this grid search CV and randomized search CV. So this is a conceptual video and once we understand the basis and the concepts uh, behind these terms uh, in the next video we will move on to the hands on part where we will try to implement grid search CV and randomized search CV in python okay so this will be the agenda for today's video and let's get started so we have discussed this uh, before in my channel uh, about the different types of parameters that we have in machine learning and I would like to recap about this particular topic. So in machine learning we often deal with two types of parameters okay. So one type of parameter is called as the model parameters and the other type is the hyperparameters. So let's try to understand each of these types of parameters with their definitions. So model parameters are those parameters of the model that can be determined by training with the training data and these can be considered as internal parameters okay. So we know that in machine learning we often deal with the data and we have some models. So you can uh, think about the models like logistic regression, support active machines or k-nearest neighbor and we feed uh, the data to the model. Okay. And what does this model try to do is it will try to find the most optimum parameters. So these uh, parameters that are determined by the model using the data are called as the model parameters. So once uh, we uh, uh, you know carry out this training process the model will try to uh, find the best parameters. So examples of these model parameters are weights and bias okay. So if you consider a linear regression uh, model so we have uh, the equations as y is equal to wx plus b where y is, uh, my y is my dependent variable okay or you can call this as the target and x is my uh, independent variable. So if we consider an example let's say that we want to determine uh, what is the salary a person can make depending on his years of work experience okay so in that case y will be the salary that we are going to predict and x will be the number of years of experience okay and uh, we know that the equation of the line is given by y is equal to mx plus b and here uh, w is similar to the slope so we know that we represent slope as m right and intercept as c so instead of uh, that we can write as w and b so w represents your weight which is similar to your slope of a line and b represents your bias which is again uh, similar to the intercept of line. So this W and B will be your model parameters okay. So we uh, initiate with a uh, random weight value and bias value and once the model uh, is fed with the data it will try to find uh, which is the best parameter value for this W and B. So this uh, set of parameters are called as the model parameters and there are other set of parameters called as hyper parameters. So hyper parameters are the parameters whose values control the learning process. These are adjustable parameters used to obtain an optimal model. So and these parameters are also called as external parameters. So let's try to understand this hyper parameters. As I have told you, these set of parameters, weights and bias, which we call as model parameters are determined or these values are derived uh, based on the data set that we have. But the hyper parameters is something that, uh, you know, we give to the model. So this hyper parameter determines how your model is going to perform. Okay, so this set of uh, values are determined by working on the data set, whereas this is given to the model and these parameters uh, you know dictates how a model is uh, going to train from that particular data set. So hence we call this uh, call these as external parameters because we can control these parameters okay. So you can change the values of hyper parameters but you cannot do it directly when it comes to the weights and bias uh, which we call as model parameters because the model tries to find the best uh, parameters on its own whereas we control the hyper parameters okay. And the examples of hyper parameters are learning rate, number of epochs and n estimators. So these are few examples again there are a lot more examples of hyper parameters. So learning that is nothing but how much do you want to change your weight and bias so if you uh, if you have seen my gradient descent uh, videos before so in that we have seen that uh, when a model is uh, training on a data set what it will try to do is initially it will uh, you know randomly assign some values to this weight and bias so we uh, usually uh, initiate with uh, you know value as zero so after that it will try to improve uh, the performance of the model so in other words it will try to minimize the loss function or the cost function 
and uh, in each step it will try to change the value of weight and bias and again calculate the loss function and uh, loss function for that particular weight and bias so in this case the learning rate determines how much change do you want to give to your weight value and bias value so this is your learning rate so if you don't understand this i'll give the link for my gradient descent video so please watch that it will uh, give you a better understanding okay so that is an example of learning rate and then we have number of epochs so you can also call this as number of iterations so this determines how many times uh, you know your model is going to go through your data so if you represent this number of iterations as 100 it means your model will go through the data 100 different times so you can give it as 1000 or whatever you want so you know it all depends on uh, how efficient you want your model to be and when it comes to a, a random forest model there is an hyper parameter called as n estimator so n estimator is nothing but the number of decision trees that you want in your random forest so uh, i hope you know that uh, random forest is nothing but it is an ensemble models where we have uh, several number of decision trees okay so it is a group of decision trees and this n estimator is nothing but the number of decision trees we want in our uh, in our random forest uh, model okay so these are the two set of parameters one is the model parameters and the other set of parameters is your hyper parameters and the most important thing that you need to remember is that model parameters are derived uh, by the machine learning model by going through the data by understanding the data whereas this hyper parameter uh hyper parameters is going to determine how your model is going to train okay so these set of parameters we can change uh, depending on our requirement okay so uh, when we talk about machine learning these are the two main step one is the hyper parameter tuning and uh, the next one is the model training so when we talk about hyper parameter tuning we try to find or we try to set the uh, optimum value for the hyper parameters as I, uh, you know as we have discussed before the hyper parameters such as number of iterations and uh, uh, you know we have uh, the number of epochs in estimators etc right so we will try to uh, set uh, you know optimum values optimum values is nothing but for that particular set of hyper parameters you will get the highest accuracy or highest you know efficiency for that particular machine learning model and model training so model training is uh, in this case you know we uh, may implement algorithms like uh, gradient descent which is an optimization algorithm that will try to give you the optimum weight value bias value and other model parameters value so the main important task in machine learning is to carry out these two steps so that we can get the best hyper parameters and the best model parameters and the reason for doing both these things is to get the highest accuracy or to get the highest efficiency when we work on machine learning okay so as i've told before uh, in hyper parameter tuning we have two main important techniques so we will try to understand about these two main important techniques which are uh, grid search cv and randomized search cv okay so before uh, moving on to that but I'll just give you a quick definition on what is meant by this hyperparameter tuning. So hyperparameter tuning refers to the process of choosing the optimum set of hyperparameters for a machine learning model. This process is also called as hyperparameter optimization. I hope now you understand the definition of this hyperparameter tuning as we have discussed this before or in the previous slides. Okay. So what we are do doing is we are just tuning the hyperparameter values so that we can get the optimum set of values. So optimum set in the sense we are going to get highest accuracy for our machine learning model. So so it's not like we are going to do this for uh, only specific models so it's not like that we will do this for all the machine learning models that we will work on okay and this you can also call this a hyper parameter optimization because we are just optimizing the process of uh, you know training the machine learning model by these set of parameters and again there are two types of hyper parameter tuning one is grid search cv and the another one is randomized search cv okay so when we uh, say grid search cv what we will do is so uh, when we have a machine learning model, when we take a machine learning model, there are different uh, hyper parameters that we uh, need to work on. Okay. And there can be different possibilities, different values that a hyper parameter can take. So when we uh, use an, a grid search, you know, use a grid search CV technique, we will try to uh, you know, use all those values. So we will, in each time we will try to uh, check that particular hyper parameter value and see which value is giving us the highest accuracy and in the randomized search cv instead of uh, calculating uh, the performance of the model for different combinations of hyper parameters we will randomly select only few parameters and then we will try to find which is the best value okay so here blue colored dots represents the best value and the green color uh, you know dots represents the different uh, hyper parameters values which you know we can choose from so if you don't understand this it's completely fine i'll just give you an example now you will be able to understand this clearly let's take an example of a support vector machine classifier okay so we know that this is a, a very important classification model that we will work on in machine learning so examples of uh, hyper parameters for support vector uh, machine classifier includes c value and kernels okay so c is nothing but uh, you know uh, 
what is the penalty that you are setting for your model so if your uh, c value is very high that means your model doesn't allow any misclassifications okay whereas if your c value is uh, very low that means like your model allows some misclassification to occur so this is the importance of c value so i value of c means no mis uh, misclassifications are allowed for the two classes or three classes that you are working on whereas low value means you, you can have misclassifications okay and turner is uh, you know we have discussed about this in our support vector machine classifier so we have built the support vector machine classifier from scratch so in that thing i have explained you how this linear uh, polynomial kernels everything works so i'll also link that video as well uh, in this video description you can check that out okay so these are all different possible values that you can uh, have for your c and kernel okay so now let's uh, try to understand this grid search cv and randomized search, uh, search cv based on this support vector machine classifier okay so in this case we have three uh, set of values right so what we will do is we will uh, create a list or we will uh, you know mention so these are all the possible values that i want to check and we just want to check for which values of c we are getting i accuracy when we are using a support vector machine classifier similarly we have different kernel values so we have linear kernels polynomial kernels rbf basically means a radial basis function kernels and sigmoid kernels so these are all the different set of kernels we have so we need to uh, check for which combination of c and kernel values we are getting the highest accuracy for that particular data set okay so here uh, green color dots represents the different uh, possible values that we are going to take and uh, blue is the value with you know highest accuracy let's say that for uh, c value of 10 and the kernel value of polynomial let's say that we are getting highest accuracy so that is represented in this uh, blue color dot okay so this is just a graphical representation of understanding grid search cv and randomized search cv okay so in this case so green color uh, uh, you know dots represent all the values that we are going to test and uh, in this case we are just taking three values okay and for kernel we are taking four values so out of all these values which is your best value so uh, we will consider each value for the c and kernel and then we will try to find this accuracy and finally we will choose the para hyper parameter value for which we are getting highest accuracy which is represented in this green color and uh so this is not doable and this is not you know we can't you know do it every time we are working on a machine learning project the reason is that you can have uh, a several number of possibilities you can have several combinations of the c kernel and apart from this there are also other hyper parameters as well so we cannot test for each of this uh, hyper parameter values because uh, if uh, you have a very large data set in that case your training is going to take a very long time and you cannot you know sometimes we don't have the uh, resources as well as the time to check for all the possible values for this hyper parameters okay so it is not like uh, computationally it may be computationally expensive okay so you may uh, need a lot of resources so in that case what we will do is we will uh, opt for randomized search cv where instead of checking for all the possible values it will randomly choose some hyper parameters values and among that uh, set of values it will try to give uh, which parameters as the highest value so this is the difference between grid search cv and randomized search cv where in the case of grid search cv we will try to uh, find the accuracy for all the different combination of hyper parameter values whereas in randomized randomized search cv we will you know try to find uh, you know we will just uh, take some random uh, hyper parameters values and we will see for which combination of values we are getting uh, high accuracy so this is how grid search cv and randomized uh, search cv works and this is a very important concepts uh, which we will use in machine learning in order to uh, determine our most uh, optimum uh, you know hyper parameter values so i hope you have understood the uh, concepts covered in this video and in the next video we will discuss about uh, you know uh, the next video will be an hands on video where we will try to implement this grid search cv as well as randomized search cv in python okay so that's it from my side and i'll uh, see you in the next upload thanks for watching